creating, the next heading in the book is creating a meditative state of mind, awakening sushumna. And when you get near the end of this, he talks about that this is two to three more months. Two to three months should be devoted to this kriya or practice, the one we're about to talk about. And so if you take that two to three months and add it on to what you had, this carries us through a total of four to six months. And here's this other practice here. And this is one of my favorite things in this whole section because there was the point that when Swamiji asked me to start help developing residential program in the ashram here in Rishikesh, uh, I was trying to explore how to use these books as textbooks for classes. And I had already read this book probably three or four times for my own sake. And, and when I was looking through the book, uh, exploring how to use it for class, I had already read this again three or four times. So I had looked at this thing six, seven, eight times. And I did what he says. Seven, eight times I did exactly what he says in the first paragraph of this section. And it was shocking to me that this happened to me. But it's what happened. And frankly, it was what told me what told me what the problem most of us are having with understanding the simple practices that we're being taught. Swamiji says, now let us go on to the next step, the process of making the mind calm and joyous so that the mind experiences delight in practicing meditation. Listen to that sentence. It's easy to think that we do meditation so that we can have a calm and joyous mind. And that's incorrect. It's backwards. It's exactly backwards. We create a calm and joyous mind so that we can meditate. It's the prerequisite. It's not the goal. Calm and joyous mind is the prerequisite, not the goal of meditation. So before you can do meditation, you have to figure out how to do that. That's just the first sentence of the section. Next, the method is called sushumna awakening. The aspirant who has the patience to proceed according to this program will surely benefit. Now many of us have already dropped out in the first few months because we didn't really see any point in having this steady posture and learning to observe our own gestures and body language. So what? I'm just going to sit down and chant this mantra and call it meditation or something. But if we have done, this is what he says here, the aspirant who has the patience to proceed according to this program, including what he's already talked about, will surely benefit. Now here comes the punchline, the one that I read through six, seven, eight times. And I think that I'm not alone in having read through it. Swamiji says, those who are, quote, economy readers, unquote, those who are economy readers will probably read through this description without ever practicing it. And they will gain only a glimpse of this process. Now to put the icing, now to put the icing on the cake, he adds the comment, may God bless them and hopefully someday they will also walk on this path of life. Let me read that again, just to make sure that the impact of that is, is clear. Those who are economy readers will probably read through this description without ever practicing it, and they will gain only a glimpse of this process. May God bless them, and hopefully someday they will also walk on this path of life. And that time that I was telling you that I was going through this myself, I was that, that's on this page over here, I was over in here on the opposite page about halfway through the page when suddenly something went through my mind. Remember, sixth, seventh, or eighth time I've looked at this. Went through mine was read right through. So I went back to this sentence, read right through. Well, I just, it just 
But what happened was it took a page and a half for that to register in my mind. I was in the process of learning what the problem is, why we sometimes miss the simple instructions that are being given to. And so I looked here, read right through. I couldn't find it. I looked down here, read right through. I couldn't find it. I went back here. I couldn't find it. And I'm looking, and in my frustration, I finally turned the thing back, and I said, I'm going to read, read everything starting at this heading, this big heading here. I'll reread from here. And then I'll run into it, and, 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 and to my surprise, it was here. Read right through was even on this page here page and a half before it registered in my mind. It took a page and a half for it to register, for me to notice what was there. And I had, and I had just done exactly what he said I was going to do. I was an economy reader, and I read through it again, six, seven, eight times, before I finally caught it. Big surprise. And once that caught my attention, you know, this is sarcastic. I actually thought to myself, how did the editors allow this to stay in here? Then, then, knowing Swamiji, then I suddenly thought, you know, I can well imagine a well-intentioned editor saying, you know, Swamiji, this is a little too strong. We shouldn't put this in here. And I could just imagine Swami Rama saying, no, no, you leave that in there. I can just imagine him saying that, knowing that somewhere, he did it all for me. Somewhere along the way, some fool is going to be, and is going to, I'm going to get their attention with this speed bump in here. May God bless them, and hopefully someday they will also walk on this path of life. Very sarcastic, seemed to me. Very strong, to say the least. If not sarcastic, sarcastic definitely strong. And I thought, well, what is this that he's talking about that's so important? And at first I thought, well, this is no big deal. This is nothing other than breath awareness. Until I started listening and, and, and really conscientiously doing what he said here and discovering that this is an incredible practice and that, and that it's absolutely essential. It's essential to having a calm and joyous mind so that you can go on and actually do meditation. So here's what he says about this thing that most of us, many of us won't do. To begin the process of sushumna awakening, remember this is based on having done the part of, of working with the body, meditating on body, going up and down the spine for up to, what was it, three or four months. It, we've already got two to three months invested just to get there. To begin this process of sushumna awakening, the meditator is prepared to focus the mind on the breath as it is felt between the two nostrils. Not as it is visualized. Focus the mind on the breath as, as it is felt. That's the cognitive sense of touch. It's not hearing. It's not seeing. It's not fantasizing. It's not a mental process. It's the feeling. It's the cognitive sense of touch of the air moving in and out of the nostril. Mind you, this is not a focus on the top of the nostrils. It is not trotica, an external gaze. The goal is to focus awareness on the flow of the breath where it can be perceived at the nostrils on inhalation and exhalation. Now, there's two nostrils, but it's experienced as one flow when you're doing like this, even though there's two nostrils. When you focus the mind on the center between the nostrils, you will soon discover that both nostrils are flowing freely just by doing that. When both nostrils flow freely, that is called sandhya the wetting of the sun and the moon, or between Pingala and Ida. This is a delightful moment in which neither worry, fear, nor other negative thoughts can distract the mind. Cannot distract the mind when that happens. However, it is important to realize that because students do not have much experience and practice in creating this state, it does not usually last and is difficult to maintain for a very long 
for a very long time. That's why they call it practice. When one regularly prepares to focus the mind on the center between the two nostrils, morning and evening, he will find that the mind easily attains a state of joy. And that joy is prerequisite to the meditation. Then the student becomes eager to attain this joy and looks forward to his or her meditation all day. Now think about this. If that has actually happened, what happened to the need for discipline in doing meditation? I'm going to discipline myself. I'm so undisciplined. How do I discipline myself, teacher? How do I discipline myself to do my meditation? The fact that we're asking that question means I don't really want to meditate. I'm doing something because I have this idea that I'm supposed to for some reason. But if it's done this way, you attain this joy and look forward to meditation all day. When both nostrils flow freely, it means that one is inhaling and exhaling through both nostrils simultaneously, which is, a, is the sign of sushumna awakening. Once this experience can be t maintained for five minutes, the student has crossed a great barrier, and the mind has attained some one-pointedness. And then he closes with, then the mind becomes focused inward. Then the mind becomes focused inward. Not prior to that. Two to three months should be devoted to this kriya or practice. And so that's a total we've got invested of four to six months for those first few stages if we're persistent. 